Welcome to the AUA Leadership and Business Podcast, where urologic professionals experience the practical application of business acumen essential to successfully navigating today's rapidly changing business environment. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, everyone. Today, we will continue the AUA Leadership and Business podcast series with a discussion on the psychology of leadership. The AUA Institute for Leadership and Business provides a great resource for members to learn about the business aspects of urologic practice, including insurance, contracts, financial performance, etc. However, without good leadership skills, one can't make successful, effective use of these business skills. Leaders are made, not born. The process of gaining admission to medical school and a good residency stresses one's individual skills, but not that of a team. Our individual successes and confidence in our clinical abilities may not guarantee our success as practice and institutional leaders. In today's podcast, we will discuss the psychology associated with effective leaders and offer a blueprint for the listeners, personal leadership development. Dr. David Green completed his urologic training at Yale, during which he spent a year working at St. James University in Leeds, UK. Following residency, he joined the faculty at Yale and was an early AUA scholar. In 1987, he joined a two-person private practice in Concord, New Hampshire, which has grown to nine urologists and eight advanced practice providers. In 2006, Dr. Green became the first CMO of Concord Hospital and organized the Concord Hospital Medical Group, tripling the size of that group during his 14-year tenure. He has also served as CEO of a five-hospital Medicare ACO, New Hampshire Accountable Care Partners. He recently completed his four-year term as treasurer of the AUA. Welcome, Dr. Green. Thank you, Dr. Miles Thomas. It's uh, wonderful to be here. (laughs) Pleasure is mine. So as we kick off this session, I'm going to ask kind of a a little bit of a difficult question. It doesn't have a straightforward answer. So it would be really helpful to try to define what a good leader is. Like, what are your thoughts about what is a good leader? Well, uh, that is a challenging question. And um, I I think I really appreciated the title of this podcast being the psychology of leadership, as opposed to the title being how to be a good leader or Mm -hmm. what is a good leader, because I don't have a a good definition of it. Um, You know, uh, Justice uh, Potter Stevens back in the 70s, uh, when hearing a case on pornography before the Supreme Court, somewhat famously said, uh, well, I don't know how to define it, but I I know it when I see it. And uh, so when I think of leadership, it's kind of the same way. You and I have been exposed to many leaders. Some are good, some are bad. But trying to understand what I should be as a a leader um, can be very challenging. So as we do this podcast, I think what we will appropriately explore is what are the what are the things that you and I have uh, come to appreciate are important elements? Uh, We may have different styles. We have different experiences, but um, what's kind of universally applicable to help us maximize our leadership skills. And if we can do that, I think it'll be a very successful uh, podcast. Um, I I think, you know, as uh, surgeons, um, our model for leadership oftentimes um, comes from the OR, uh, which is a very rarefied atmosphere and leadership as defined in the OR doesn't play very well uh, outside uh, the OR. Um, I I think um, uh, leadership is not what hangs on the wall. And uh, regrettably, sometimes uh, the leader, meaning the chair of the department or the section, becomes the chair of the department or section because of the diplomas on the wall, the grant funding, whatever but not necessarily because they are uh, a good or, or effective leader. And um, I attended a, a session on leadership, um, uh, medical leadership. And uh, one of the things that uh, was, I was struck by was that your clinical excellence 
uh, well, very valuable. Uh, when you do become a, a leader, particularly one with some positional responsibilities, um, well, that that acclaim or uh, respect as a leader buys you about six months. Um, and then after that, it really is your your skill and effectiveness as a leader. So um, we ha can have a tendency to confuse, uh, oh, if she's a great surgeon, um, um, she'll be a great leader. And, and that isn't uh, necessarily uh, always the case. And I think the other thing for us is we sometimes get confused. Well, I don't have positional authority. I'm, I'm not the chief. Um, and, and yet one of the themes I would um, uh, say is we're all leaders in, in some capacity. Um, and positional authority, while it's great, um, sometimes makes things more challenging. And I always felt that whenever I had to, quote, assert, unquote, my positional authority, um, I lost some of my legitimacy as a leader. Um, I always tried to be more of a more of an influencer. Um, and, and finally, as physicians, you know, we go through our um, pre-medical training. Um, we go through medical school to get into a good residency. Uh, frankly, it's not a team sport. Um, it's about our individual um, abilities. And unlike um, maybe getting through an MBA program or that, where there's value on uh, your team's work, um, leadership tends to be neglected um, in our training. And um, so, um, but as I step back, and I don't know how you would view things, but um, I, I think the things that I've seen over my career and that I've tried to strive for, I think authenticity is very important. Um, so as, a, as, as a, a, a good leader, it needs to be me. Uh, I can't, um, I love my, uh, my uh, program director at Yale, Bernie Litton, um, but uh, I'm not Bernie Litton. And um, I can't be um, Bernie Lit. Uh, honesty uh, is, I think, extremely important. Not just honesty to the people you're trying to, to lead, but honesty to yourself. Um, you have to be true um, to yourself. Um, you have to be scrupulously fair. If people think that, you know, you're not a fair person, they're not going to follow uh, your leadership. And um, and again, I think somewhat aligned with that is consistency. Um, you can't be going one way one day, um, another way another day, um, and uh, be very schizoid and be a very uh, effective leader. So I think those are some of the attributes um, that I've seen in my career that are critical elements to be a leader. I completely agree. As, as you were speaking, and I was thinking of my own personal experience in my environments, um, one of the one of the concerns I have is just for the next generation. It's kind of as you go through the process and mature as professional, you you move from this authoritative kind of situation, like you said in the OR, like what you say goes. But in the real world, <laughs> anywhere else, you you don't have that same power, and it becomes a lot more collaborative and and listening and understanding, and one of the concerns I have just about the next generation is just we don't have as many um, avenues for people to learn about being a good leader. We're, we're, we're using certain models. Some may be good, some may not be as good. But with succession planning of the next generation to, to lead the AUA, urology as a whole, nationally and internationally, um, I think we, we really need to have more of these conversations and set up more of these models so the next generations or even mid-career urologists like myself can can learn how to be a, a good leader. And I think exactly what you said, um, as I'm looking to the leaders I've seen over my past 20 years of experience, um, the ones who are consistent and fair are the ones who I really valued their opinion because they set the stage for making the right decision without bias. And that's what I really appreciated. So what do you think the other like, intrinsic aspects of being a good leader would be? Well, I, I think to your point, um, one of the challenges that I've had um, 
as I was trying to develop leaders amongst the physician group, um, it's easy to give feedback. It's harder to receive it. And when I was a resident, um, there was no feedback given. I just showed up. And if I was allowed to do the next case, I figured I was doing pretty well. Um, and yes. so I, I think for the generation, your generation, I will say, are younger, um, there is um, more openness, not just to giving feedback. That, to me, is pretty easy. It might not be done effectively, but it's easy. You can always tell somebody what you think is wrong with them. Um, but to be able to be open and, and receive that um, is equally important because I, I think as we um, consider intrinsic characteristics um, uh, or aspects of being a good leader, uh, of primary importance to me is knowing yourself. Um, I'm in New England and Bill Parcells um, uh, coached the Patriots for a while and Bill would oftentimes say in his press conferences, you know, well, you are who you are. Um, Mm -hmm. um, now, um, I take that to mean, who are you? Um, and um, many of us have a hard time understanding that. But I can tell you, and I think you would agree, mm -hmm. everybody else around you has no difficulty figuring out who you are. Now, by the time you're two or three years old, you have figured out uh, how to push the buttons on mom and dad. You have figured out if you want a cookie, are you going to more likely get it from mom an hour before dinner or dad uh, when he's distracted um, trying to uh, watch a football game? And um, so you can be very confident, I think, that your residents, um, the office staff, they doesn't take them very long to figure out who you are, um, but it becomes it can become very challenging for us to figure out who we are because frankly uh, we are in a position of um, respect authority whatever um, to do what we do in the operating room takes a great deal of uh, self-confidence um, uh, firm ego um, and um, it's hard to speak to power and i think as physicians we sometimes forget we're seen as pretty powerful uh, individuals. So I think one of the intrinsic challenges is knowing yourself, getting honest feedback um, can be hard to receive because we do have egos, um, but it can be very challenging uh, to find uh, as well. Uh, you know, when you think about um, current situation, who in Moscow is going to give feedback to Vladimir Putin? So um, how does he know um, really uh, how things are going in Ukraine? And uh, maybe he doesn't want to know, but uh, if you're going to be a good leader, you, you'll want to know. And, and how, do you, how do you do that? Uh, how do you find your style? Um, you know, I, I see people trying to be a leader, sometimes not being themselves. So, you know, the reality, um, is that perception can be everything. And, and if you're not genuine in what you're doing, if you're trying to be somebody you're not, that, that comes across um, very easily. Sometimes I think when we're um, leaders, uh, we think we can't appear vulnerable or weak. Um, and it's very difficult uh, to admit um, that we made a mistake or uh, we've had second thoughts. I think clinically we are learning that it's good to say to a patient and his or her family, you know, I'm sorry, uh, I made a mistake. We're getting better about that, um, perhaps driven by uh, you know legal concerns. Um, but I think the same thing uh, is true when we're trying to lead um, our clinic, our residence, um, a hospital, um, uh, or whatever. And um, we're human, and, and we have emotions, um, both good and, and bad emotions. And how do we 
control or understand how we act um, because, um, you know, we'll have friends that we're trying to be accountable for or lead. That can be problematic. Um, we have people that we just maybe don't, not terribly fond of, and yet we still need to lead uh, them. Um, so I, I think one of the big things for for us is trust. So mm -hmm. first, my first day as an intern, I call up, I find out I'm on call. Oh boy. So I call up my third year general surgical resident who I'm on with that night and I say, what do I need to know? And I'm, I'm thinking it's about patience. And he says, well, eat when you get a chance. Uh, don't trust anybody and don't F with the pancreas. Okay. <laughs> but that to me over the years, that trust thing, we don't trust very easily. And uh, if you're going to be a good leader, an effective leader, uh, you do have to learn to trust. So uh, how do you do that? Well, uh, we've had a very strong organizational development department in our, our hospital. And um, so when I got the job as CMO, the, the CEO said, you know, uh, you better go off and do one of those courses. Um, I don't care what you do, but it's part of the culture. And so I did that. And it was Positive Power and Influence was the name of it. Um, it was a week-long course. I was exhausted. Um, but it really, you know, it involved a 360-degree uh, survey. It involved videotaping, all sorts of things. Uh, I came away a much better leader, uh, more knowledgeable about myself. So I would encourage the listener to seriously consider taking some type of uh, structural course, um, it, you know, it could be as simple as periodic 360s. It, it could be a Hogan assessment. Uh, there are many programs out there, but you have to work at it. Um, leaders aren't born, um, they're made. And it begins, I think, with a voyage of self-knowledge, self-discovery, um, self-awareness. I agree. And the important topic of trust, and I wonder just... <sighs> throughout the system of training, at the end of the day, we've all been raised in the culture where we were responsible for the final product. And if we depend on others um, and there was a failure anywhere in the system, we still kind of took that, that failure personally. And so I think we need to look at things a little bit differently, that everything is a team um, and that we may be the leader of the team, but the team actually requires and to actually win or succeed at whatever our initiative is. The entire team has to be available. Entire team has to be accountable. And then I think there's a lot more trust among all of the members if we're doing it together. Because I think we are, I mean, being surgeons, we're very independent souls because we're the ones who fix it. We're the ones who do it. But then we put all the accountability on ourselves. And sometimes we we, we aren't as good leaders because we don't understand what our limitations may be and that there is someone better to do X, Y, or Z. Well, and I think you're absolutely right. But I also find if you're trying to affect change, um, you have to allow people to own um, a project or whatever. And, um, you know, again, I'll go back to child rearing. Um, you can't be a helicopter a parent. You have to give your kids the space um, to accept responsibility, but to feel uh, that they own something, um, that it's not being imposed by me as the leader. I mean, the, uh, I, I like the word influencer better um, mm -hmm. than leader, or I did. I mean, now with the internet, you know, everybody's <laughs> an influencer, and that's a whole different exactly. uh, podcast. But uh, you know, I, I think the, the point is, you're right. Um, you feel intense personal responsibility. You check, you double check. Um, and medicine is like being the captain of a ship in many ways. But uh, if something goes wrong with a ship, whether you had anything to do with it or not, as captain, you're going to be the one that gets fired um, or demoted or, or whatever. So that is, a, a, I think, a challenge for me. Um, we are kind of control freaks. Um, 
But if we're going to be effective leaders, we have to um, have accountability, but we have to give people the opportunity to feel that they have played a role. And, I agree. Um, and I really like what you said, lead by influence versus like lead by authority. Yeah, no, and, and that's that's hard Begin because when, what do we see every day? Well, we're in the OR as a resident and what we see is the surgeon um, commanding um, everything um, um, takes place because he or she um, has said it's going to be this way or, or whatever, but not an effective leadership model when you get out there or outside of the OR. I agree. Um, so if we look outside of ourselves, um, what do you think one of the most important extrinsic aspects of being a good leader is? Um, I, I think it's, it's a great question. And, um, um, the answer, um, I think we all are sometimes challenged with our social intelligence. Um, it, you know, we're pretty good at it. We're seeing patients in the office every day. Uh, we're sizing them up. Um, doctors have many faults, but I think, um, uh, some of our strengths um, are that we can spot when someone's BSing us pretty, pretty well. Um, but still, um, we've all seen colleagues who um, struggle with the way they treat people or perceive um, uh, people and uh, perception um, for those around us um, really influences all of our all of our interactions. So probably the thing that I have um, most found beneficial is um, the importance of uh, mission, uh, vision, and values. And prior to becoming uh, an, uh, a chief medical officer, I don't know that I paid much attention to the hospital's uh, mission uh, at all. And yet the lesson I learned from the CEO who was mentoring me uh, was really about the importance. Um, and people come to work, sure, for a paycheck, but um, particularly in healthcare, they come because they want to believe uh, in something uh, greater than themselves. Uh, that's what keeps people coming uh, back to work. Uh, Tim Cook from Apple, uh, I said to a graduating class recently, whatever you do, uh, lead with your values. So um, I think constantly embracing, understanding, not just saying, but doing and acting aligned with the values of your practice, um, your organization, uh, your department um, becomes really important. And then understanding those around you, um, it's just an extension of understanding yourself as well. So, um, you know, it, it sounded kind of funny to me at first. Um, I mentioned our, our hospital was uh, very focused on organizational development, but I would be in a, a, a meeting and people would be talking about their color. Um, and I felt like I was from outer space. I, I didn't have a color. Um, and, and then I realized that it was almost an expectation that everybody went through um, a colors personality course. Um, and um, so, uh, all right, I went off and I did it. Um, and it, it basically was 24 questions. And um, those questions, um, uh, you know, you, were things like, um, um, are you precise and painstaking or creative and imaginative? Choose one. And um, Long and short of it is you, you get uh, done with that and um, you look at your scores and um, you would be, if you were red, it identified you as being activity oriented and patient, likes to direct others, in other words, a surgeon. Um, uh, you could be yellow, which is precision oriented, you like things that can be measured. If you're green, you kind of want to make everybody happy. Um, you're good in groups, but you're kind of emotional. 
And if you're blue, well, then you're kind of um, bored with mundane activities. Uh, you base your ideas on intuition. And uh, so the colors course told me a lot about myself uh, because it was myself answering those questions. Um, but it became sort of the lingua franca of the organization. And now I could see, oh, I'm not crazy about this person over there because they're blue. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I'm going to lead them, um, well, I need to know my own color um, and what I'm going to be challenged with, with their color. And if I'm trying to put together a committee to be effective, um, well, I better not put uh, a red person with a blue person or the sparks are going to fly and um, uh, things aren't going to get done. So one of the themes in our uh, podcast here is just the importance of attending to your leadership skills by taking a, a course like Colors, maybe introducing it to your department, because all of a sudden now you have people declaring to you in a very non-threatening way who they are, uh, you know yourself, and now you know how to uh, better interact with them. Um, one of the more significant aha moments I had uh, was a lecture um, on the difference between men and women. Um, and it was at a Society of Women in Urology meeting about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was um, uh, leading a task force trying to improve the AUA's um, sensitivity to women in urology. And uh, as you probably know, the meetings were at an ungodly hour. It was like 6.30 in the morning on Sundays at the annual meeting. And But uh, the speaker, it was like a, this great aha moment for me, um, not only in the workplace, which was her theme, but at home. Uh, why does my wife want to keep interrupting me when I'm balancing the checkbook? I'll deal with what she wants when I've done this task where... In general, women are used to multitasking, and and as you would know very vividly, what you have to go through as a woman um, in the workplace is very different than than what I do. But again, if I hadn't been there, if I hadn't taken that course, I wouldn't be nearly as effective um, or understanding about the challenges that the folks I'm trying to lead um, were going through. So. Um, I think those are important things. And then uh, you're probably aware of things like listening. Our guys in particular don't like to listen, but <laughs> I don't know that, that we have a monopoly on that. Um, you know, you read uh, studies where how long does it take a physician in an exam room to interrupt the patient? In about 20 seconds. Um, and uh, becoming a, a better listener, a true listener, an active listener, I think um, really, um, really helps us um, when we uh, are trying to be good leaders. And you can't lead from your office. Uh, you have to be out there um, understanding what the workers are doing. So uh, it's busy, we have a tough schedule, but you know, spending uh, half an hour or an hour with your schedulers um, or your um, patient care coordinators or that can be very revealing and and really help you as as you're as you're leading them. I agree. Um, I think it is challenging because once once you're placed in that leadership role and you have new responsibilities, some which you were trained for and some which you were not, there is a a kind of desire to just put your head down and work. And as you say, you, your job is really figuring out who your who your team is. It's really figuring out who you're working with, what their needs are, and to be able to listen to what their needs are. Because if you're in your office door closed, you have no idea what's really happening um, with your practice, with your department, with your patients. And I think it's the old adage, you're, you're, you're given two ears and one mouth. So it's really important for us to sit back and learn to be quiet and listen. Um, great way of putting it. It is frustrating at times, I will admit, but 
it's it's what it's what we are supposed to do. So, well, I think again, um, it is the theme that leaders are not born; um, mm -hmm. they are made. And um, the whole subject of this podcast is really about leadership. Um, and uh, I think the central theme is um, what do what do we need to do? Um, there is no you'll never be the perfect leader. Um, it's you're always a work in progress. You always will be learning. Um, and if you're serious about being a leader, you just, you know, it's no different than taking CMEs uh, to improve your um, medical knowledge. Um, it is a constant um, growth. And if you approach it with that theme, um, I, I think that is uh, the central element to being uh, a good leader. There just is, you have to do the work and uh, there's no um, real shortcut there. And uh, certainly, um, again, I'll beat the drum about knowing yourself, but we're emotional beings um, and um, understanding our emotions and how that impacts our judgment is important, not just in the clinical sphere, but also uh, very much so um, if we're trying to run a department or lead other physicians or uh, affect, uh, affect change. Uh, because those who will be working with us are going to be different and some will be very fond of and others uh, will be more challenged by that. And we just have to understand our uh, reaction. Well, thank you so much. This has been an enlightening and empowering discussion. Uh, do, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Well, um, I, I think um, one thing we didn't talk a lot about here is just communication. Um, so uh, as Mark Twain said, the problem with communication is the illusion that it's taken place. So um, I think the thing that challenged me most as a leader is communication um, and um, so um, um, to the listener I would say you can't be a leader um, uh, through email uh, texts and social media uh, uh, two-thirds of communication is nonverbal um, and I don't know about you but in the pandemic um, I actually liked seeing my patients on zoom better than I did in the office wearing a mask because I couldn't read them. Um, so there is no substitute as a leader uh, to doing that. I think um, I, I feel strongly positional authority uh, can be a real trap. Um, um, some of the best leaders I know didn't have a title um, and some of the worst leaders I knew did have a title. We're all leaders. So I think that's the central mm -hmm. thing. Um, and. Uh, uh, I think um, the other caveat I would say is, and this kind of gets back to the emotional element, um, the opposite of a strongly held uh, truth is not a lie, but another strongly held truth. So uh, Neil Bohr said that, but I, I would find all the time, you know, someone would run in my office, oh, you know, this dirty rotten scoundrel did X, Y, and Z. And at first I would say, particularly if it was a friend of mine, oh my goodness, that's terrible. You know, we'll have to, you know, punch that person out. Um, and then I got burned a few times. And so there's always two sides to a story. So you, you as a leader, have to learn to not react to the first person that, you know, uh, comes through the door. And I think the last thing I, I would leave um, the listener with, uh, I thought this was a great quote. Um, mm -hmm. I actually got it out of a book um, called How Doctors Think um, by um, Grobman. Um, but uh, it's a quote from a Dr. F. W. Peabody in 1925. And uh, Dr. Peabody said, uh, quote, the secret of the care of the patient is caring for the patient. That's very mm -hmm. true. But I think the secret of being a good leader um, is the care for the people that you're trying to lead. And so I think if people really know you care, um, 
and what you're doing is true to the mission and values you all share, um, that's the secret sauce um, to being a leader. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I agree. Caring and communication. I think well, that sorry. is the secret sauce. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Green. And I'd really like to thank our listening audience also. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, make AUA Leadership in Business your go-to podcast. Subscribe today by searching AUA Leadership in Business on your favorite podcast app and enhance your leadership and business education needs.